If you're afraid that you might be facing a tax bill this April, you might be eligible to employ one or more of these three easy ways that you can hang on to more of your money and lower your tax bill. As a disclaimer, I'm not a licensed tax professional. This is not tax advice. Please consult your friendly neighborhood CPA and do your own research, but feel free to use this video as a starting point. All right. That out of the way, let's get started. I believe that paying your taxes is part of being a good citizen, right? Your tax dollars ideally are gonna fund things like infrastructure and public schools and public transport and so on. But I also believe that as long as the Internal Revenue Code is a zillion page document full of loopholes exploited by the likes of hedge fund managers the world over, it is fully within the rights of the metaphoric plebe to play the game in an informed way. A few years ago, while in the throes of a desperate, desperate attempt to offset approximately $40,000 I owed to the IRS. That's a, uh, that's a lot of money. I used a few different methods to lower my tax liability. With the help of my CPA, I learned a lot in the process. So depending on how you earn and your access to retirement accounts and certain healthcare plans, it's possible that all three of the options we're going to cover today will be viable for you, but they all have one big thing in common. They are all legal ways to hold on to more of your own money instead of forking it over. What are we talking about? Investment accounts with tax deductible contributions, of course. Crucially, these vehicles allow contributions made this year in 2023 to be characterized as though they were made last year in 2022. Now, obviously, to take advantage of this, you have to have the cash available to invest. And a major thing to note right away that when you're contributing to these investment vehicles, they're going to ask you which contribution year you are electing. And if you're trying to ease your 2022 tax burden, like the bill you're going to pay in April, be sure to select 2022. Because if you choose 2023, it'll apply the contribution to next season's tax bill. Up first, the most popular kid in school, the traditional IRA. There are a lot of con convoluted rules around this account. So let's talk about them. If you and your spouse, if you have one, are not covered by employer-sponsored retirement plans at work, so think a 401k, a 403b, most likely, you can each contribute up to $6,000 to your very own traditional IRAs for the 2022 tax season. That's up to $12,000 you can wipe right off the top of your taxable income if both partners contribute the full amount to their respective IRAs. And a minor note, these are intended to be individual retirement accounts. There's no such thing as a joint IRA. So for example, if you and your spouse are in the 24% marginal tax bracket after other deductions and you both contribute the maximum allowed, that's a joint tax savings of around $2,880. 12,000 times 24% is how we got there. This means if you owed the IRS, say, 1500 bucks, this one move would wipe out that tax liability and probably generate a refund too. We'll link a handy dandy table from our boys at the IRS with a breakdown of how contribution limits change for different scenarios, like if only one spouse is covered by a retirement plan at work. When this won't work, remember, this is only fully applicable if you are not covered by retirement plans at work. Also note that you're only allowed to contribute a maximum of $6,000 across your traditional and Roth IRAs. So this also won't work if you've already contributed the maximum for 2022, even if you were contributing to a Roth IRA, not a traditional. But if you contributed, say, $3,000 to a Roth IRA, you would have $3,000 left. That's fair game to contribute to either. Fortunately, if you are covered by a plan at work and you're not eligible to consider a deductible traditional IRA contribution, you can still contribute up to $6,000 to a Roth IRA with some income limitations. We'll link a video in the description about how to get around those, though that won't lower your taxes this year. You can open a traditional or Roth IRA at pretty much all major brokerage firms. I prefer robo-advisors for ease of use, so think Betterment, M1 Finance, etc. But if you choose to take the DIY route, just remember to invest the cash you contribute. I know way too many smart people who opened an IRA, did the responsible thing, funded it, but then never invested the cash, so the cash just sat there for years uninvested. We have an episode about indices to consider when you're building a diversified portfolio that we will link in the show notes. Next up, the SEP IRA. All right, so if you have any self-employment income, 
read 1099 income, you are an eligible hashtag rich girl for the SEP IRA. So a few things to note. Number one, if you have full-time employees, the rules are a little different because you have to contribute to their SEP IRAs too. So if that's your situation, you probably have a business CPA who can help guide this choice for you. But if you're just a solopreneur or side hustler, this is probably a fairly uncomplicated option for you. And number two, you can contribute to a SEP IRA even if you are also covered by, say, a 401k out of W-2 employer since they are accounts funded by two different sources of income. The TLDR on the SEP IRA is that you can contribute up to 25% of your net business income up to a whopping $61,000 for 2022. Now, if you want to calculate a super precise contribution for the biggest deduction possible, you can always pay a CPA to do this for you, but a tax pro that I befriended taught me this cool trick to make this a little bit easier. So since you deduct your self-employment taxes of 15.3% in order to get your true net business income on which the contribution is based, you can simply multiply your self-employment income after write-offs by 20% rather than 25%. And this will give you a rough estimate of how much you can contribute to your SEP IRA. So if your business earned $15,000 and you're writing off $3,000 for expenses, leaving you with $12,000 of net business income before your other deductions, you would multiply 12,000 by 20%. Allah, you can contribute around $2,400 to the SEP IRA. So for those with a lot of side hustle or self-employment income, this deduction can be quite significant. Now, this won't work if A, none of your income came from 1099 sources, or B, you've already contributed the maximum to a solo or individual 401k for that source of income. For the uninitiated, a solo 401k is just a 401k you can open for yourself and use as a self-employed person. For example, if I had a solo 401k in 2022 and I already contributed 20% of my net business income to it as employer contributions, I cannot then double dip and contribute 20% more to a SEP IRA too. Now, if you had a solo 401k, but you did not fully fund it, you could finish funding that opened 401k with your employer contributions in 2023 for the 2022 tax year. That's totally fair game, no SEP IRA required. But the reason the SEP IRA is a more viable option for retroactive tax avoidance is because you cannot open a solo 401k in 2023 and then fund it for 2022. The solo 401k has to be opened by December 31st, 2022 to be eligible for 2022 contributions. But that is why the SEP IRA is such a baller tool. You could have started a business in 2022, made absolutely no moves to invest in a pre-tax self-employment vehicle, and then decide on April 13th, 2023, that you want to open and fund one for 2022. Now, you can generally open SEP IRAs at all major brokerage firms without much fuss. Robo-advisors typically offer them as well. But remember, if you're going to DIY it, invest the money you contribute. One big watch out. If you are currently someone who dabbles in the backdoor Roth IRA strategy because you are over the Roth IRA income limit, you will want to weigh your priorities before you open and fund a SEP IRA because a SEP IRA counts as a traditional pre-tax IRA and it'll make executing your backdoor Roth IRA more complicated. So sometimes people will opt for solo 401ks instead for this reason. But if you're down for a complicated workaround, you can open both a SEP IRA and a solo 401k in the year 2023, fund the SEP IRA for 2022, and then after you filed and tax season is over, roll that shit over into your solo 401k such that you have a $0 balance in the SEP IRA. And voila, problem solved. Back to a Roth IRA commence. Just note that your business needs to be incorporated with an EIN number to open a solo 401k. And finally, the HSA, the consolation prize for our securitized late capitalist healthcare hellscape. If you have a high deductible health plan as defined by the IRS, you might be eligible for an HSA plan. 
You may already have an HSA set up through your work, or you may need to open one yourself. But once you surpass a certain amount of cash in the account, typically somewhere in the $1,000 to $2,000 range, but it does vary by plan, you're usually able to invest the funds inside it, something you will do directly within your HSA account portal. The contributions and the growth will be tax-free forever if you use the money for qualified medical expenses. So it is a great place to rack up hella capital gains. The contribution limits vary on HSA plans for the 2022 tax year, but if your health insurance plan covers just you solo, the limit is $3,650. And if it covers your whole family, it's $7,300 for 2022. You'll have to go to your HSA provider's website and make a direct contribution as opposed to a payroll contribution to contribute one big fat lump sum in 2023 for 2022, which is technically suboptimal because direct contributions are not exempt from FICA tax the same way payroll deductions are. The good news is an HSA contribution made in 2023 can be retroactively tax deductible for 2022. But moving forward for your 2023 contributions, if you're going to keep contributing to the HSA, consider contributing through payroll deductions because then your contributions won't be subjected to the 7.65% FICA tax either. So when won't this work? This won't work if you've already contributed the maximum to your HSA in 2022. Unfortunately, this retroactive move isn't an option if you've already done that. This also won't work if you have a low deductible health plan. But the HSA say is one of the best tax vehicles out there because it's effectively a second traditional IRA that'll never be subjected to required minimum distributions. If you hang on to your HSA until you're 65, it'll basically convert to follow the same rules as a traditional IRA, and you'll be able to make withdrawals for whatever you want, not just health expenses, without paying a penalty. You'll just pay taxes on your withdrawals like you would with a traditional IRA if you don't spend them on health-related expenses, but that's about it. Someone who's not covered by a retirement plan at work has side hustle income, and has a high deductible health plan, could theoretically use all three of these methods. That is a triple tax whammy, and I hate myself. It's worth restating, I'm not a licensed tax professional. Please consult your CPA, do your own research before making any big money moves, but hopefully this serves as a starting point for your pre-tax investing game this tax season if you haven't made any decisions yet. And if you want to hear the full episode of this week's Money with Katie show, click the video that just popped up on the screen and in the description of this video. Our show is a production of Morning Brew and is produced by Hannah Velez and me, Katie Gaddy Tossan. Devin Emery is our chief content officer, and our video editors are Christy Muldoon, Sebastian Vega, and Nicole Friedman. Additional fact-checking comes from Kate Brandt.